Hello and welcome to your Asian Pulse TV, an informative and resourceful station. I'm your host Manvi Randhawa and today we are broadcasting from the unceded territories of Silver Tooth Nation, Kartsi, Moskim and Kwantlen Nation. We feel very blessed for the generosity of the First Nation people who let us share this traditional and ancestral land with them to live, laugh and grow here. May 14th to 20th is Victims and Survivors of Crime Week, when Kuwar and Lower Mainland Multicultural Society is hosting a forum to talk about the victims of crime and their rights. It is taking place from 10.30 a.m. until 2.30 p.m. at Bonsworth Community Center in Burnaby. National Physiotherapy Month is also celebrated in the month of May. Now, who doesn't know how important a physiotherapist is? especially if you have been in an accident or if you have a chronic muscle or joint pain. Physiotherapy works wonders on your body when it is in pain. So let's celebrate all of the physiotherapists out there. Now is the time to hear some words from our sponsors. I understand how important it is to have a place called home and it's frustrating using your hard-earned money on rent. Vic Prasad can make you a homeowner. Get pre-approved services provided to first-time buyers and new immigrants. You can qualify for mortgage even if you have bad credit. Call Vic Prasad now on 604-306-6647. Vic Prasad is associated with Craft Mortgages Canada Incorporated. For any kind of visa-related services, contact Milky Way Immigration, a galaxy of opportunities located at Unit 209-9547-152 Street, Surrey, BC. They have licensed immigration consultants, placement officers, and LMIA experts to meet your immigration and recruitment needs. Book one-time free consultation either on Facebook or by calling 604-396-0005. Bollywood Banquet Hall and Conference Center, located at Pile Business Center at 201-8166-128 Street in Surrey. No celebration is too small to accommodate you. They have newly renovated two halls to serve you, up to 1,000 guest capacity, top-notch chefs to delight you with delectable and heavenly cuisine. So just call Bollywood Banquet Hall at 604-598-2700 for your events. Benisi Mobile Detailing Services, they offer commercial trucks, cars, SUV, boats, bikes, RVs, and much more. Just give them a call at 778-808-2859. Just give them a call at 778-808-2859 and they will do all kind of services at your home. Thank you, sponsors. Today, our guest is the COO of Surrey Board of Trade, Ms. Indra Bhan. She will walk us through her journey with Surrey Board of Trade. You know, today's show, we're going to be talking to Indra Bhan. Indra Bhan has been with Surrey Board of Trade for the last 20 years, and she is COO, Chief Operating Officer of Surrey Board of Trade. So we invited her, we invited her in our studios to talk about her journey. How is it that you lasted? How is it that she lasted at one organization for that period of time? It got to be that she must like working there, as she feels very comfortable, and or else people do change so many different jobs during their lifetime of uh, their employment. So welcome, Indra. Thank you, thank you, Camila. Um, so yes, I, uh, I would say I love working at the Surrey Board of Trade, and that's why I lasted for 20 years. Um, it, was, it is all about the people I met there, um, my uh, colleagues, they taught me a lot. So I will start off with my journey. I uh, moved to um, Canada in around 2002, I think late 2002. And then I had two little uh, boys, young boys, that went into school right away. And that was the reason we came in September, because of the school uh, mm -hmm. period over here. And so they started, and my husband and I immediately started looking for uh, jobs. And so at that time, we realized that um, it wasn't that easy as we thought, that it would be so easy to mm -hmm. find a job. Um, we were going to so many different places with our resumes, but each and everyone was looking for either Canadian experience or Canadian education. And all of a sudden we realized that uh, it doesn't matter what you come up with, whether you bring a lot of education from where you're coming or experience, you have to start from the bottom. So that's when I, uh, we started thinking what is the next step, what are we going to do and how are we going to make it. It wasn't easy. We actually, me, I wanted to go back home. Um, <laughs> and I thought it was going to be very difficult to start from the scratch, uh, from the bottom. But then I, instead, I 
decided to go back to school and I decided to, to be able to get Canadian experience, I, I need uh, to work somewhere and volunteer was one of the options that I had. So um, I had a friend, uh, actually he was my dad's friend, they were actually gym mates, my dad and him, and he knew the Surrey Board of Trade, at that time it was called the Surrey Chamber mm -hmm. of Commerce, he mentioned to my dad, uh, that your daughter is looking for a job, why doesn't she try the Surrey Chamber? They are, um, you know, see if she can get in there. So the next day, the very next day, I was at the Surrey Chamber, and now the Surrey Board of Trade office, asking them if there was a position, if not, if there is a volunteer position available. So yes, they said yes, and then I started with them as a volunteer the next day. Um, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, so what did you do in Fiji? In Fiji, I was working for Fiji Airways, and I worked for Fiji Airways for 15 years, and that also shows that I loved working for Fiji <laughs> Airways as well, yeah. And I was working... So uh, what, how, what positions. did you work at Fiji Airways? Like a hostess? Like, or, uh, no, or, various different positions. Oh, okay. Various different positions. I started off again there from school. Like after I, Well, my first job was at the Sheraton, and that's where I met my husband, actually. Mm -hmm. And then I moved on to Fiji Airways. Uh, and then I started off as an uh, admin assistant over there as well, then an executive assistant, and then uh, the customer service manager. And so, same yeah, so you yeah. worked yourself up yes. as well. Yeah. And also, what was the first job in Canada? The first job in Canada was the Surrey Board of Trade, but at the same time, I was also working for Future Shop. Okay. Um, Future Shop was part time. Uh, during the weekends, I used to do that, and I used to work as a volunteer at the Surrey Board of Trade as well at the same time. So they both came together. At so the same time. At the same yeah, time, yeah. yeah. Right. So there are a lot of people, like a lot of people that come in here, and they have big dreams, big visions, because when we, Canada, the way Canada advertises all over the world, how Canada is open to everything, and if you're a teacher there, you could be a teacher here if you're a doctor in India or Fiji, whatever, you can practice that in here. But the truth of the matter is there is no such thing like that. Once you land on this country, you have to start from the bottom. Yes, correct. It doesn't matter what education and what training and what certification and everything you have. And that's why, like even you said to yourself, there was a point in your life that you thought you built your career up with Fiji Airways, in Fiji, well-respected positions, and then when you come in here and you don't get what you want, then, I mean, you get so disheartened, yes. you want to go back. You say, what am I doing here? And that's how a lot of people land up in this country and they have a vision, but uh, they, they don't want to start from the scratch. So while, how difficult was for you and with your two young kids, you and your husband and family, to be able to say to yourself, what am I doing here? I was better off there. <laughs> That's so true. You're 100% right. Yes, I felt that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what am I doing here? I'm going back. Yeah, but it was my, I mean, the, the inspiration. And, you know, I looked at my two boys. They had a good education. They started off school. For me to go back and start in Fiji, again, was not making sense. And, and I, you know, I think I did it. And I, it's, it was because of my, my two young children. I wanted them to be successful, and I knew in my mind that over here they will be successful. So I said, I will do it. Uh, so I did say that it was my persistence that made me do and become the woman I am today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I agreed to volunteer, I agreed to work at Future Shop, I agreed to go to school at the same time. So basically, Camilla, I was working and in school seven days. I had no break. I'm, I'm so glad that I had my mom at that time and she mm. took care of my two young kids. But, mm. but sometimes after I would go to um, the Surrey Chamber to volunteer and then from one to nine, I would go to Future Shop to work uh, part-time, yeah. it yeah. was a part-time mm -hmm. job. And, and some days I would be going to the school too. So it was on the go, it was on the go. It wasn't easy, but it, it's all about you know, your willpower. You, you have to have you know, a clear focus of what you want to do. If mm -hmm. you have a focus and if you have a goal and you know you want to do that, you cannot fail. Mm -hmm. you, you, you move towards, just have a goal and move towards that. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what happened to me. I had a goal. I wanted, to be, I wanted to be successful. I wanted to get to where I was back at home over here as well, and, and I did it.
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a lot of people also, they have a job and they work in a place for two, three years. Then they keep applying with other places. And because you work there, whether you're not happy or you are even happy, and there are a lot of opportunities in the job too, but your mind is not settled. You are not happy. It says, oh, BC Hydro is hiring or BC Ferries is hiring or somebody else. And you start throwing your application everywhere. And so many times you get lucky to go for interview and you quit here and run from one job to another because the success of the job or satisfaction of a job doesn't come because you're running from one place to another. It's just what you want to do in life. What makes you happy, right? Yeah. So... I would suggest or I would recommend that if you know you everyone wants to progress but it's not about jumping from job to job it's about jumping from position to position in the same company yes yes look for opportunities in the same company that you're working for work hard in whatever you are doing and then move on to the next position instead of looking stop looking for jobs elsewhere <laughs> look for opportunities in that same company in yeah. the same organization that you're working for yeah. and that's what I did yeah. yes I think you have to be faithful, you have to be grounded, you yes. know in and out of the organization like yourself, mm-hmm. and then you grow from there. Yes. And one day you can reach the ladder that yeah. everybody, Indra has left. In 20 years, she started with a volunteer, with a very part-time work, but where she ended up, she is, uh, her CEO is... Uh, in Anita Peter Haberman, I, yeah, yes. Haberman, and just one more letter, then she can be a CEO of that organization. So I think that is very true. Instead of running and if place to place, you should be looking for looking for the opportunities and what you are good at. Yeah. Go back to school, even if you are not that educated. Go back to school, but better yourself if you want to be yeah. a CEO, president of the company, whatever. So there are a lot of people that we see today, and I would like to say in, in our own community, it's a Fijian community, we have a huge community. We have about 78,000 people somewhere scattered in the metro Vancouver area. That There are so many people, they've gone back to Fiji because they couldn't settle down in here or cannot integrate into the system because they thought they were better off back home. But here... People have to work hard. Yes. Nobody is going to pay you money for if you just want to kill your day there and you are not good at what you are doing. That is so important that whatever you do, you are good at what you are you doing. You are good at, you love it, you are honest with it yeah. and you work hard Yeah. and you will make it. Yeah. Every day is a new day and you need to do it right so that your work shines. Yeah. You need to love what you are doing. Yeah. It's very important to love what you're doing. Every morning when I wake up in the morning, I'm looking forward to going to work. Yeah. And this has been for the last 20 years. I never feel like that, oh, I wish it was my day off today. I, I'm excited about going to work. And that is because I love what I'm doing. Yes. That's what you need to find. You need to find the job that you love. Mm-hmm. And to do that, you need to be honest with the job that you are doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is so, so true. And I feel the same way too. Job is not a job for me. I would have done that as a volunteer work. But even if I can do the volunteer work and getting paid, why would I not do that, right? So that is so important to be able to love the job that you want to do. And you can always, always, if there there is a job and it's kind of a dead-end job and you get so bored and tired and there is no place for you to climb up the ladder, then maybe it's a good chance. Get yourself educated and and join the company that there are opportunities in that, that you can grow with the company, right? Yeah. So you are a prime example sitting in here, how you came from Fiji and how you worked up yourself to be the COO of a company which serves about over 6,000 members with Surrey, it's not called Surrey Chamber of Commerce anymore, it's Surrey Board of Trade and it's very well respected Surrey Board of Trade and in here and all over the country. I just want you to say to the people, especially the younger generation, they don't have no vision. They don't know what they want to do in life or they are so focused everywhere else and they don't, they cannot focus on one thing, whether I want to go back to school and be an IT or I want to be a nurse or I want to be a doctor. What would you like to say? Why do you know what 
what you want to do. How do you know it? Or should we try different things and maybe... Yeah, trying different things is an option, but it's not the best option. You, as an individual, um, you should know, um, you know, what you love doing. That's number one. It's not what work you want to do, what, uh, what position or what company you want to work for. Think what you love to do. Think about that and then think what's the next step. Okay, so for me, I, when I was in Fiji Airways, I loved customer service. I loved working with passengers. I loved taking care of them. So when I came here, I wanted to look for a job where I would have people that I can. So this, this was the right fit for me. Mm -hmm. We have over 6,000 members, as you say. Um, so I was able to work with the members. Oh, back at home, it was passengers. Over here, it's members. So it's the same thing. So you need to know from you know from within you what you what you love to do what what is it that you want to and then make that as your career and i think that will help you a lot yes and during this journey um, get you know meet people and get yourself known and you know get recommendations talk to the right people um, i w i always say uh, that you should always stay around people that are smarter than you <laughs> so that's what I did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Stay around people that are smarter than you and learn from them. Have conversations with them. So that way you will be successful. But it, the key here is about what you love to do. Don't just get a job because of money. That you, I mean, I know it's difficult and it's very hard to accept that. We all need money. We all, when we come here, we all need to work. And I did work for Future Shop for yeah. that reason because I needed money. Yeah. But while I was doing that, I was also searching for the right opportunity for me. I was working for Future Shop, but a Future Shop was not what and I wanted, what you to, wanted do. to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's why I took this second part where I was enjoying what I was doing. Even, even though I was a volunteer, I still I enjoyed it. And even when you are a volunteer, make sure you feel that that is your own company and you make sure that you work as hard as you would work for a, for a job that you will be paid for. Mm -hmm. So don't take it easy when you are a volunteer. That's so yeah. so well said. Because even if you don't have a job in the company, go try out as being a volunteer. Yes. Whether you like puppies or cats or animals or in the food bank, at the food bank, whatever. There are so many non-for-profit organizations in here. Try it out. Right. And if there is a job opening and if you are very good volunteer and very faithful, if there is a job opening, they will hire the volunteer first yeah. then to put it out in the exactly. newspapers everywhere else yes. to be able to hire. So follow your passion. We yeah. all have some passion in us, what we want to yeah, do. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened to me mm -hmm. when I volunteered. And I said earlier that I only volunteered for two weeks when I was offered a position at the yeah. Surrey Board of Trade, Surrey Chamber at that time. The CEO at that time, uh, she um, offered me the, um, a part-time position to take minutes because she saw me taking notes in shorthand, and she was amazed at that. At that, I only showed it to her when I volunteered. When she asked me to do something for her, I took her note in, in my shorthand, shorthand notes. So she was, when she <laughs> saw it, she was impressed. She said, same time, she said, Indra, would you like to take minutes of our board and executive meetings mm -hmm. as a part-time staff? I, I took it up right away. Yes. So then uh, I did that for about a month or so. And then that's when this next uh, position came available, which was actually created because she saw that I can do it. So she yeah. went to the board and asked the board if she, if she could have another position. When the board approved that position, when she came out of the boardroom, she asked me, Indra, would you take this position? And I said yes immediately <laughs> yeah. because that's what I wanted yeah. to do. Yeah. And so that's when that I became the admin assistant. Yeah. And within uh, six months, uh, she promoted me to the business resource center coordinator. And then from there, I moved on to membership services manager. I stayed in that position for seven years. And when this manager, the, um, I had another um, that the, the CEO that hired me had left and I had another different executive director when he was uh, offering me this position and he said, Indra, you can do it. You're a strong woman, you can do it. I was a little yes. membership services manager because I was doing something else. But because I love people, I love customer service, I think it worked. So I stayed in the membership services manager position for seven years. 
uh, and then in the last 12 years, uh, 12 years ago, I was promoted to the Chief Operating Office. I've been in this position for 12 years now, and I tell everyone I'm going to be here for the next 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> Until you retire. Yes. Until you retire. Yeah. And you were talking about shorthand. Yes. Because shorthand, not very many people know how to write shorthand in here. You know, back home, we just take shorthand notes. If you're a secretary or assistant secretary to the ED or something, then you take the notes or the minutes, yes. and you all do it in shorthand. But <laughs> not here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but here I'm still they, using yeah. my shorthand skills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is yeah. so good. But here people use the dicta yes. dictation, whatever that recording thing. <laughs> technology. Yeah, technology, <laughs> yeah. The doctors and all that do it. Yeah. And then their secretary type it out. What would you like to say to the people? You are so empowering. You are one of the people that look up to you. The younger women or younger generation or the women or the people of color that are struggling in here or they are new to the country and they said, uh, this the Canada doesn't have anything for me. What advice would you want to give it to those people that have lost hope in their own career choices? Yeah, and I know I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again because this is this is true. It it's been I'm an example of it. Um, just be out there, go out in the community, meet people, ask questions, make friends get involved. The key here is, and I said this earlier also, that conversation is education, number one thing. Learn from each other, have conversation with each other, and then move on from there. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that that is what I did, and here I am today. And when you volunteer, and I know I've said this before, it is very important to go out and volunteer, and when, while you're doing that, you know, you be honest, do the job. And uh, it, it is very important that you love what you do. So find the right thing that you want to do. And if you have any questions, always feel free to find me at the Surrey Board of Trade. Uh, just phone me. Um, if you go on our website, businessinsurrey.com, you'll get all the contact information. I'm happy to speak with you. And if there is anything available at the Surrey Board of Trade, I'm happy to get you on board as well. Yeah. And if you are you. doing uh, business in Surrey, and you want to join Surrey Board of Trade then. Yes. This is the woman in here. She is not the membership manager, but she's well above that, and she will take you in, and you can grow your business from that as well. Absolutely. So, thank you so much, you know, and when you were saying that to go meet the people, but some people are a little shy, and uh, I, I'm one of them that I can go and talk, but I think you need to move beyond that. Yes. Look very professional and go meet people, because that's where you're going to get supported, yes. you're, and people will see your strength and your confidence. We all should be confident in uh, under your own skin, and I think that's very important. So, we are very unique. We are not like the rest of the people. But we have our own specialty, so exercise that and be whatever you want to be. And what Indra said, follow her thing. Yeah. You're not the only one. There's yeah. a lot of people that are shy about networking yeah. and you know meeting people, but don't be. Mm -hmm. Just go out there. <laughs> and go say, introduce yourself and talk Just to them. Introduce yourself, yeah. talk to them, tell them what you do, what you want to do. It works. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for being able to take your time during your break time or an hour's time to come and talk and empower the other people that are listening to you today and watching you today. And congratulations for being with Surrey Board of Trade for last 20 years. And like you said, you're going to stay there for another 30 till you retire. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Camilla, and thank you for having me. Thank Pleasure you. is always mine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Indra. You have been such an inspiration to all of us who are watching you today. Now we have some important announcements that you would like to take note of, so have your pen and paper ready. No Ties 1879 podcast, an Indo-Fijian cultural society, is hosting an event in the observance of Girmitriya Day, which is on May 13th, Saturday. And this event would be taking place at Clayton Community Centre, located at 7155 87A Avenue in Surrey. This will be the reflection of the lived experiences and history of the undentured laborers in Fiji. This is a free event, so come out and learn about some history of these laborers 
from Fiji. Food drive fundraising in aid of Mr. Nilesh Prasad, who is going through a medical treatment in India, is taking place on May 13th from 11 a.m. until 4 p.m. Address is 14027 59A Avenue. There will be halal chicken pulao with tomato chutney for just $1.10 per serving. For tickets and more information, please call 604-720-5754 or call Suman Prakash at 604-618-4600. IG Wealth Management Walk for Alzheimer is taking place on May 28th at most of the major cities in Canada. Register online and raise some funds at walkforalzheimer.ca Flamingo Paradise event in collaboration with Showman Entertainment and Production House is bringing a comedy night on uh, May 27th at the The Indian Kitchen Club. Richmond Night Market is now open until the end of September every weekend. Go out and enjoy the cuisines from all over the world. If you have missed our shows, you can watch it again tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Or you can watch it again on Saturday at 5.30 p.m. on all of Shaw Cable channels. Most of our shows are also uploaded on our YouTube channel under the Camila Singh Show. Before I leave, I want to leave you with these thoughts by Helen Keller. Most of the beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or cannot be touched. They can only be felt. With that, have a wonderful week. I'll see you next time. I understand how important it is to have a place called home, and it's frustrating using your hard-earned money on rent. Vic Prasad can make you a homeowner. Get pre-approved services provided to first-time buyers and new immigrants. You can qualify for mortgage even if you have bad credit. Call Vic Prasad now on 604-306-6647. Vic Prasad is associated with Craft Mortgages Canada Incorporated. For any kind of visa-related services, contact Milky Way Immigration, a galaxy of opportunities located at Unit 209-9547-152 Street, Surrey, BC. They have licensed immigration consultants, placement officers, and LMIA experts to meet your immigration and recruitment needs. Book one-time free consultation either on Facebook or by calling 604-396-0005.